What's going on guys? Tanner back here bringing you another video. What I got for you guys today is we are going to be talking a little bit about the biggest lies that recruiters will tell you when you go to see them before you can get any of your processing started. So the first meeting, the biggest lies that a recruiter will tell you when you're trying to enlist in the military. Before we get into that, I'd just like to take a moment. I threw a poll up on YouTube today. I'll put a picture of it on the screen so you guys can see it. I was asking to see if you guys would like to see me do full-time content when my contract contract ends in August of next year. I go on terminal leave in June and I really want to do full-time content. We're projected to be at a number of subscribers where full-time content should be possible for me. So if you haven't voted already, go vote on that or just let me know in the comment section below. I'm really going to need everyone's support on this these next couple of months while we try to make this transition into back into the civilian life and all these other good things but i'm still going to be bringing you guys the most up-to-date air force content i'm still going to have plenty of people in the military who i can talk to every day i still have all my you know access to information that i'm going to need so we're still going to have the best youtube channel on youtube for air force content but without further ado let's get right into today's video all right guys so i took the moment to go ahead and jot down my biggest uh things that they're going to say to you to lie to you. I put down five. If we're not too far into the video, if it's not too long, I'll add an extra two in there, just some bonus ones. But let's get into them. So the first one is going to be that you cannot choose your MOS or AFSC depending on the branch. This is not true. You do not have to sign a contract that you don't want to. So if a recruiter tells you, no, nah, you can't have that job, you can't take that, you can't pick that one, you have to take one of these ones right here, which is usually gonna be some garbage job that you don't want for, you know, Air Force, they're gonna be like, oh, you need to be an, uh, a crew chief or you need to be security forces or, you know, one of the jobs that not too many people want because they're always in high demand. They're not gonna tell you that you can take a medical job or a comm job or anything to do with electrical or anything like that. They're not going to let you know that those are available. They're going to try to push you towards jobs that aren't highly sought after like those ones that I listed before. So if they tell you that you cannot choose your job, leave that recruiter and go find another one because you can choose your job. You do not have to sign a contract that you don't want to. Number two is when they tell you that there's not a signing bonus for the job you want and that you should take this job because there is a signing bonus. Do your research on signing bonuses before you even go, find a list of jobs that interest you on the Air Force website and go ahead and make a list of all of the jobs that you could want and figure out if there's a signing bonus for it. Number three, this one almost got me when I was enlisting, but since I was able to quick ship, I picked a job, but my recruiter used this line on me and it almost got me. He said, just pick a job now, any job, and you can always cross train to the one that you want later. Just take this one, bro. Just take this job, you know, this crew chief job, this secfo job, or whatever the ones he's trying to throw at you. Just take this one, man, and then whatever you want to do later, you can go down and cross train, you know, two years from now. It's not that big of a deal. I did it. My buddy did it. They always have a story about how they did something or their buddy did something, but there's never any proof of it. You know, cross training is a lot harder than you would have to think because when you cross train, there has to be a slot for you. They have to be looking for someone with your rank to go and leave your career field and join that other career field. Then you're going to have to get approval from all sorts of different people to go and cross train. And then you're going to spend six months in the process of going to tech school and then you're going to get moved to a new base or all these different things. And it's a lot harder than you think to be able to cross train. So when they tell you that you can just cross train later and that it's not that big of a deal, don't buy into it because it's harder than you think. And they're just trying to just beat around the bush and put you in some bullshit that you're going to hate. Number four, a lot of you have probably been told this one and I'm going to debunk it right now. They're going to tell you that with this job, you don't have to deploy. You're not going to deploy, man. Anyone at any time on any given day in any given month in any given year can deploy. Anyone. It doesn't matter what your job is, you can deploy. If you're a crew chief, you can deploy. If you're security forces, you will deploy. If you're services, you can deploy. If you're medical, you can deploy. My buddy is medical. He's like admin for medical. He just deployed. He was gone for seven and a half months because of COVID. He got extended out. You will deploy at some point. Your name most likely will pop up. It most likely will. Almost every job deploys. I'm not even sure if there's a job in the military that doesn't deploy. Most likely in your contract, the you know the opinion about deploying, they will ask you, hey, do you want to deploy? Or you know, the, the words will come up, hey, you're going to deploy soon, and you have to go. 
Luckily for me, I had someone who took my slot and they wanted to go ahead of me, which pushed my date back further to when I'd already be out. And he, you know, he wanted the, the extra money. I said, all right, go for it, man. So he deployed. But most likely you're going to have to deploy. So if they tell you that you don't, don't believe them because they're lying to you to get you to sign. Number five. This one is one that uh, a lot of people buy into and a lot of people have been in my live streams and have told me that they have fallen for this one. When they say just pick an open general contract and then you get to pick your job later. They're gonna hand you a list of all the jobs that you put on your dream sheet and you get to pick that one later. You're not. Open general means they're gonna put you in a random job while you're at basic and you're gonna be stuck with that. I had people in my flight who went open contract, open general, and they got jobs that they didn't want. Most of my buddies at basic wanted to go into electrical career fields, things with electronics, you know, cyber security, cyber systems, uh, RF, anything like that. They got put as crew chiefs. One got put as security forces. One got put as, I don't even remember what it was. It was something to do on the flight line had something to do with like flight suits or something like that and they were all pissed they're like this isn't what he said that was going to happen and you can't buy into that because most of the times recruiters are just telling you what you want to hear not what you need to hear they're telling you what you want to hear that's the biggest problem with today's you know with the recruiters and stuff like that don't believe everything they say and whatever they do say write it down and fact check it when you get home you know it's or just wait till you we have a live stream on the channel, come through and ask those questions. It's better to be safe than sorry and sign a contract not knowing what's really going on. I'm gonna throw in the bonus ones here for you guys, just because we got some time left. We're only at about seven minutes on the recording. So this one right here, I've had people talk to me about this one, and so that's why I put it on there. It didn't happen to me personally, but don't worry about getting anything in writing. When they tell you that you have a signing bonus, or your job has a signing bonus, get it in writing. They will lie to you like no other and nothing's in writing. You'll get to MEPS and it's not on your contract and then you have to sign, you either sign the contract or you don't. You don't sign the contract, your date gets pushed back farther. So many different things will come up there. Your signing bonus, the length of your contract, special, special things that are put in there, you know, into your contract that you need in there, your college credits, anything. Get it in writing that it's good to go. If you don't, then you're screwed in the long run. There's plenty of people who have had problems with this in the past. I was actually talking to one of my buddies today at work. He wanted to sign a four-year contract because he had four years at JROTC. His recruiter sent it in that he wanted a six-year contract instead of a four. And when he got to MEPS, they're like, well, it's going to take about three and a half hours extra for us to redo the contract with the correct years on there. So he just signed it because he had been at MEPS for 12 hours that day and he wanted to go home. So... Get everything in writing, just like you should with anything, any other deal that you make in your life, get it in writing. Number seven, last but not least, is hyping up garbage jobs. They're gonna tell you how you can be one of the best people ever by being in some garbage career field. Whenever they start hyping up certain career fields, that means that career field is low manned and they need people for that job like no other. So they're gonna make it sound this like cush job, like, oh yeah, man, you're gonna be working like five days a week, you're gonna be working like 40 hours, you're gonna get like an hour lunch, hour for gym time, all this stuff. Yeah, I did that for a while. I cross train bro and then I did this and it's awesome it was like the best thing ever I kind of regret cross training and they're gonna do that my recruiter did that he told me he was RF same with the guy at MEPS when I went to sign the RF contract he told me he was RF and I was like well what did you do he's like ah oh, it's kind of hard to explain man like it was so long ago I'm like all right bro you didn't you were an RF don't lie like don't hype things up when you don't know what you're talking about because then you're gonna influence people's opinions and then they're gonna be miserable and then they wonder why suicide rates are so high and retention rates aren't that high and all these different things. And that's one of the biggest problems that we are faced with in the Air Force today is people don't want to you know, stay around. They don't want to you know, re-up their contract because they got put in a job that they didn't know they were getting because either they didn't do research or the recruiter lied to them. But that was Five of the biggest things that they're going to lie to you about with two additional ones that aren't, you know, they're there, but they're not as big. But I hope this was informative. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, please smash the like button. It really helps out the YouTube channel with the algorithm, pushes out the videos. Subscribe if you are new. Turn on the post notification bell to know when we post a video. We're posting at least five videos every single week. Leave a comment of what you thought of the video and what you want to see next. I really appreciate when you guys help me out with coming up with video ideas. It makes my life so much easier because it takes hours for me to come up with just one idea so hope you guys all had a good day appreciate you all 
But without further ado, thank you for uh, tuning into the video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on all my social medias. They'll be in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. I love you all. Stay safe, and have a great day. Like, I got a feeling you niggas don't like me. I'm talking vacation. This shit can get pricey. They know I'm the greatest. My nigga, that's Nike. I do what I do. I just do it like Nike. Needed some help. She started twerking. She said it is mine. If I go put the work in, I secured the bag, and I bought her a Birkin. No, I can't swim, so I drown in the ocean. This is the mask I'm doing the most. They praying I fall. I'm killing they